Welcome to another Inside Story where we just go behind the scenes and share things with you that you probably never hear on my television program, but they're great things that God is doing. And one of the great things that God's been doing in our ministry is just the quality of people that God brings to us. And they're such a blessing to us and every one of them have a story about what God has done in their life to bring them to this place. We just want you to be blessed by all of the good things that are happening here at Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Well, welcome everyone. We want to uh, invite you into this very special edition of our Inside Story. This is where um, you get to see all the things that are happening behind the scenes here at Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. And I'll tell you, there is a lot of things going on in this ministry. And you as friends and partners are such a big part of this. And sometimes you'll see everything that's happening on the outside, but not realizing all the amazing people that God has brought us to this ministry for such a time as this. And so this month, we have some very special people to introduce you to. And this is Jeff and Jessica Giamo. And so you guys are, uh, have been with the ministry for a number of years. And so I'm really excited to have you guys share your story and the things that you do here in the ministry. But uh, just real quickly, what currently do you do here at Andrew Walmack Ministries? Okay. Well, I'm the stories producer. Mm -hmm. So we do healing journeys, grace encounters, destiny stories. And then we do a little bit of promotional stuff. But then we also produce Beyond the Game. and then. Jessica, she covers more short-term stories. Mm -hmm. I'll let you talk about that. Yeah, thank you. I'm the uh, <laughs> associate producer of special features. So we handle the shorter stories. It's called the AWM Now and just yeah. kind of short little stories to let people know what's going on in the ministry. Amen. So kind of another version of inside stories, not as long as far as, but just like all the different things that are happening with this ministry because there, it's not just TV and Bible school. It's TV and Bible school and prison ministry and demo and, and outreach. And it's just amazing what this ministry, the breadth of what this ministry does. And so you guys are essential to helping us capture those things. So I wanted them to first know what you do here in the ministry, but I want uh, our viewers to get to know you guys. So um, where are you originally from individually? Uh, and how did you get here to Colorado? Okay. Well, I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up in a drug and alcohol abuse ministry. My parents were counselors there. And so um, it was a great ministry. I saw a lot of lives changed, mm -hmm. but there was also some legalism I grew up under. Yeah. And so when I was in college, my first semester, a lot of things that I struggled with kind of, um, I started realizing, questioning what I believed and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I had some brothers who went through Karis. And they introduced me to Andrew's teachings about primarily sovereignty of God and grace. Mm -hmm. And so I started listening to that. It changed my life. And so then I shared it with two of my friends. And uh, one of them is Brian. He's producing this show. <laughs> That's awesome. And then another one is Jeremy. And he uh, ended up becoming a successful animator. Yeah. Yeah. So you came to Karis. What year was out that you came to Karis? That was 2011. 2011. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so I'm from a, a really small town called Madison in Georgia, and I actually had the privilege of growing up under Andrew's teachings. My parents got into him when I was probably around 11 or 12, and that's when we started going to the Summer Family Bible Conference every single year. And there was this really cool woman there named Carrie Pickett who <laughs> was over the youth program. And I remember I, I had these really big dreams that I wanted to do, I um, wanted to actually go to the University of Georgia and study sports broadcasting and go into that. That was my dream. I wanted mm -hmm. to be the next Aaron Andrews. And um, <laughs> every summer I would come to this conference and you would have all these amazing stories of all these adventures you went on with God. And mm -hmm. that always spoke to me. I, I didn't necessarily want to be a missionary, but I knew I wanted to live a really big life with God. And yeah. at the end of the day, I knew that that was going to happen if I went to Karis. And at the time, yeah. there was no media school. There was no third year program. It was mm -hmm. just a two year school still. And so I decided after I graduated high school, I was going to Karis and I moved and came to Karis. That was in 2010. That's awesome. And then eventually they did have a media school. Yep. 
So did you attend media school as well? I did. During my second year, they announced that they were starting a third year program. That's when it started was my second year. Mm -hmm. So I was the second class to go through media school. That's awesome. And it was just amazing. God showed me I could actually use these media dreams for him. That's neat. And were you guys in school at the same time? I was a year ahead of him. Okay. In, in Karis, yeah. All right. So now did you guys meet in Karis? And is that how you guys started a romantic journey towards marriage? It was, it was a long journey, first off. <laughs> <laughs> so Jessica was one year ahead of me, so she got to lead my mission team trip to Germany. Oh, nice. So I had a big crush on her, but <laughs> um, she didn't find me very attractive at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I had long, shaggy hair. <laughs> It's I'll not let, that. It's not that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I had actually just gone through a really bad breakup with a guy at Karis. And so I had kind of just been tired of all that. And I was mm -hmm. like done with it. And I was just kind of in a really weird place. And God was really kind of working on my heart. And I got to lead this Germany mission trip, which was amazing because it really took all my focus. And I got to kind of pour myself into that. Yeah. And that's the trip that Jeff was on. And he never told me <laughs> he liked me. So there no, was that. I was dropping hints. And no. No, but so anyway, that's kind of how we became friends because we both loved media and we decided to do a video of our mission trip together. Oh, nice. And that's when we became friends. So we were just friends in Karis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So after you finished media school, uh, what was your next step after graduating? So for me, I was really kind of struggling because this was right after all that with like, God, what do you want me to do? I just went through media school and... Mm -hmm. um, I actually had a conversation with Mike Pickett mm -hmm. <laughs> about all of the amazing video projects that were available in Russia. And so yep. we got to talking about that and I decided, I was like, all right, I'm going to go to Russia. So I spent the next six months working and saving. And then in January of that next year, I moved and spent six months with you guys in Russia. I know. It was awesome. She moved over in January, which says a lot mm -hmm. that you know oh, yeah. you really called to come to Russia and in then, January. <laughs> yeah. Russian Christmas Day was when yes, I arrived. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's awesome. So yeah, you, so you came to Russia and were with us there while we were, while we were still um, uh, leading the Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College there in Russia. And it was great because I remember talking and asking you, what, what do you see yourself doing? And I remember we talked about this amazing idea of being able to travel around the world to all of our AWM Cares locations and capture stories and things like that. And so it's really cool to see that, that you guys as a married couple, that's exactly what you're doing because you guys also travel, correct? Yep. Yep, we so do. So where yeah. are some of the places that you have gotten to travel to and capture stories? Wow. So <laughs> together we've gone to Nepal and we've gone to Holland. Um, I've been to Haiti, Uganda, Norway, Italy, France, um, quite a few places. He's been everywhere, but yeah. I've, I've, I've also been to Brazil um, on a couple trips with mission teams and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. We've yes. done a lot of awesome. uh, local stuff too. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I do remember when Jessica was in Russia, we always heard about Jeff the friend. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The yeah. friend Jeff. The friend Jeff. Friend zone Jeff. <laughs> I'd bring him up and they'd go, oh, the friend, the friend Jeff. Yeah, yeah friend. she's like Jeff. I'm like, like oh, why yes, are you guys the saying friend. that? <laughs> <laughs> I think we knew before she did that you guys are going to get together. Oh, good, good. That's, that's, that's awesome. So now together you, um, when, when did you get married? September 28th, 2016. 2016. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you answered that one. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> so you um, now work together as a team in the ministry. Um, how do you enjoy working together doing what you're doing? Well, that's kind of all we know, honestly, because um, I was still friend zone Jeff when she started working here. Uh, mm -hmm. And basically, we kind of started working together a lot. And it was when we worked on these projects together that I think a small flame began to grow. Yes. And so, yeah, we don't know anything different. Um, yeah. We work together. We look at each other's work and yeah. we're brutally honest with each other. But honestly, it helps. Jessica has got a great eye and she'll see things in the story that I won't be able to see yeah. and, and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been really great because we were working together when we were just friends. So when we were doing that, we weren't really afraid of hurting each other's feelings. 
we would just kind of be honest and then we started dating and then we got married and that kind of never really went away. I mean, it may have shifted a little bit for a time, but <laughs> um, we're just able to kind of be honest with each other and we both are very passionate about the story. And so mm -hmm. I think when it comes down to it, we can be harsh and critical of each other's work because we both see the, the value of the story behind it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's powerful. So tell me about how you capture stories because I know um, like you said, with healing journeys, um, destiny stories. Uh, what were some of the other ones that you mentioned? Um, grace encounters. Yes. Financial breakthroughs. Yeah. So you capture, uh, you know, some pretty intricate stories that have to be constantly fit within a certain time frame. How hard is that to find the heartbeat of a story? Whew. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is pretty hard. Um, honestly, when we do our stories, because we've got a team of people, I think it's uh, seven of us now, and I always tell the team, make sure you're praying in the Spirit and asking God, like, what is it that you want it to be brought out? Mm -hmm. Because when you go and you interview someone, you get probably two and a half hours worth of an interview per person, and yeah. sometimes you have 10, 20 hours of footage, mm -hmm. and there's a million different ways you could tell that story. But what we're trying to do is make it nice and concise so that somebody who's dealing with something, they can watch it in a matter of 10 minutes and then find out, okay, here's the teachings that really helped them, yeah. or here's what God showed them. Hmm. So it really is about kind of listening to the Holy Spirit to find like the little keys that are helping people on their own journeys. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you usually have to cut a story down to? We try to get the story down around 10 minutes. We oh, find wow. that that works best for Andrew being able to like teach from it or show it at conferences. Mm. Um, we've looked at the analytics on our website and we find that we have an 85% retention rate, which is really, nice. really big. Yeah. Um, and we find that that really has a lot to do with the timing that we've made these stories, making them as concise as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you, how do you get blessed in doing these stories? So you're sitting there for 10, 20 hours getting interviews on all kinds of of, of stories, the healing stories and the destiny stories and like the grace encounters, of those who've experienced the message of grace and how it's changed them. So when you sit and listen to them, how has it impacted the two of you? Man, it's, uh. it's just, uh, thank you. It's just, it's been amazing. Um, especially when we get to travel and meet these people, we, we interview them and we tell their story, but we spend every waking moment with them yeah. as well for, mm -hmm. you know, a week or however long we're there. And just we, we get to see them live this life. You know, they've sold their lives out to this message and to see what they've been through. It's a huge faith booster in us. I mean, normally when I'm interviewing someone, I'm like crying and like going through all <laughs> yeah. these emotions. And then we have to tell the story and make sure we get all the right shots and make sure we do it. And then we have to leave. And it's like leaving these people. It's the hardest thing ever because we become so close to them and they're just such inspiring people. I mean, we try to show that in their stories, but these people in real life are the most genuine, real people I've ever met. That's and awesome. to say goodbye is always so hard, but it's just amazing to get to know these people all around the world. Yeah. So what do they think when they uh, watch their story? After <laughs> you've spent all this time, you've asked them all these questions and they're like anticipating what you're going to put together. What's the feedback you get from people who you've taken that 10, 20 hours and you brought it down to 10 minutes. What do, what do they think about it? We hope they like it. <laughs> yeah. um, so, sometimes uh, I think when we're filming, they get a little nervous, like, wait, this is going to be 10 minutes. And I don't think that computes. But then I feel like most of the time when they see their story, it's they, I feel like we've been told before, like, I never saw my story that way. Like, mm -hmm. I never knew it was that inspiring. Like, they know their story from their personal experience, yeah. you know, and it means very, very much to them. But then they see it from someone else's eyes and see it from someone who is maybe struggling themselves. And I think they're surprised at how inspiring their story can actually be. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. So um, what would you say um, has been your favorite story oh, man. to date? <laughs> And maybe that's an unfair question because you guys have done so many, but is, does what stand out um, for you guys? Well, I mean, I'll let Jessica answer hers. I don't want to steal her answer. <laughs> so oh, yeah? for me, filming Julianne Hartman's healing journey, mm -hmm. I did that five years ago. And it was so amazing because one of my childhood heroes, basically Butch Hartman, it was his wife 
who was healed of fibromyalgia. Mm-hmm. And so I get to go over there. I bring Jeremy, I bring Brian, mm-hmm. and we're filming our childhood hero. He brings <laughs> us to Nickelodeon Studios. We get to see how the filming of Fairly Odd Parents is done. Mm-hmm. Um, the airport actually loses our luggage, so I get to borrow Butch's pajamas. <laughs> and I mean, you can't. He's like, ah, oh, this I'm is like, awesome. God, you keep surprising me. <laughs> <laughs> But to me, awesome. that, that story, just because it was so amazing <laughs> seeing someone that I grew up with and grew up looking, looking up to and now getting to, to see their story and, and film yeah. it, it was just that, that, was, that did something for me. That's really cool. But what's your answer? Well, for have me, you worn anybody's PJs that you have? So I have not gotten to wear anyone's PJs, so I'm still <laughs> open to that. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean... Oh, gosh, that's so hard story-wise. But one of the most amazing trips, I think, for me was Nepal. Is that what you thought I was going to say? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, that was just incredible because we go there. We spend a few days in Kathmandu. It's just such – it's probably the most different kind of country I've ever mm-hmm. been to. And then we mm-hmm. spent, I think, three or four days trekking um, the Long Tong Trail. And it was my first time sleeping with spiders, so that was a real growth moment <laughs> for me. Yeah. Um, but just those people, I mean, it was it was something I've never experienced before. We would go to these guest houses and stay with them. And it's like their their whole life is taking care of the people who travel through. And they would just like, immediately when we get there, they just start making us food. And, and like, we could not speak their language at all. I don't even think the guy we were with could really speak mm-hmm. their language that well. But it was almost like there was no lack of communication. It was just so... God was just like there. And I'm not even sure how much they believed in God. And yet mm-hmm. it was almost just like, something was connecting us and they were so genuine and yet they had nothing. And yeah. that trip absolutely just, I think it really, really changed me, not just in what I could physically do, trekking up to 15,000 feet, but um, just the people and realizing mm-hmm. just kind of how big the world is. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, what would you tell those that are watching? Because like you said, you had dreams to be the sports broadcaster and and things like that. So sometimes we grow up and we have all these different dreams. How have you seen God lead you both individually and then now together? And and how do you see God fulfilling some of those things that he put in your heart? And is it different than what you anticipated? <laughs> yeah, well, it certainly is different than I could have ever anticipated. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wanted to be making films and stuff like that. And I remember working at a secular job before I started working here and the person's like, you want to do films? He's like, and you're going to school for a Bible degree? And he's like, good luck with that. (laughs) And I mean, I'm telling you, you just put your trust in God. He's put the desires in your heart. And sometimes it doesn't make sense, but you take one little step after another. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, I never thought I'd be able to have my passion for film and my passion for sharing the gospel work together the way it is now. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, like I said, I thought I was giving up all those dreams to come to Karis and it turns out that I didn't have to. And so kind of following after that, it, it really showed me that that those desires that God put in my heart were from him. Mm-hmm. But I had to learn to trust him with them, you know, because my, my plan was to go to UGA and, you know, follow this one path. And I look back and I just think, thank God I didn't do that because I'm not sure where I would be. And today I just have so many opportunities that sometimes I have to stop and go, I don't know why I'm here. Like I didn't bring myself here. I'm, I'm a high school graduate. Well, a Karis graduate, but, <laughs> and, um, and I get to do all these things. And recently we were actually filming for a new season of Beyond the Game at the Super Bowl in uh, Miami. And we were actually at the Super Bowl breakfast and I'm standing in this room full of all these incredible people. And I'm thinking, even if I had tried to become a sports broadcaster, I'd probably never end up in this room. That's and awesome. yet I'm here. And mm-hmm. it was just an incredible feeling of mm-hmm. God just kind of reminding me of, you know, I can get you where you need to go. All That's you have good. to do is trust me. And it hasn't failed me yet. So that is wow. awesome. That's really awesome. How, um, let me ask and go back to a little bit of your Karis experience. How do you feel that prepared you to surrender to God's plan for your life? What did it instill within you those two, three years of Karis? Hmm. <laughs> well, you want to go first because I feel like my answer is kind of long. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I would say that um, my time at Karis really kind of helped me. I mean, I was young. I was 18. So I was kind of, you know, 
becoming an adult, I guess. <laughs> but um, it was the best place for me. I really was able to kind of figure out, okay, God, like, how do I become an adult? How do I take charge of my life? How do I follow you? And those lessons that I learned in Karis were really, really important for me. And then obviously getting to go to media school, um, God kind of, again, was showing me that he could lead me where he wanted me to go. And media school was incredible. I got to just try a bunch of things and put myself out there and develop my skills. And it was a safe place to do that. And, yeah. and so Karis really, I know I wouldn't be here without it. Mm -hmm. And I think it just really helped me understand who I am and that helped launch me into everything that I was able to do. So that's awesome. Yeah. Amen. That's very nice. Very yeah, nice. Thank you. <laughs> well, for me, um, honestly, the years I was at Karis were two of the hardest years. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think it was three. It was more like three. It was three. Okay, so basically, <laughs> I learned so much um, because I went to school the first year, mm -hmm. moved back to Florida, mm -hmm. thinking I was never going to go back to finish Karis. Mm -hmm. And that summer, God completely turned everything around. I mean, mm -hmm. me and Jeremy and Brian, we all moved back to Florida. We're like, okay, we're done with school. And somehow we all ended up back out in Colorado. I was doing my second year. Um, and then I kind of wanted to impress Jessica after our mission trip. So since we both did video, I ended up uh, skipping classes to work on the, the story. And so I was, I was at Starbucks when I was supposed to be doing my, taking my tests. Oh. And so test day kind of, I, I kept telling myself, I'm going to do the makeup test. And mm -hmm. so I was like, Holy Spirit, you can remind me to take my makeup test. And it was like supernaturally, I forgot. <laughs> I woke up that morning. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take my test. And then makeup test time, I completely forgot. And so Barry Bennett had to tell me two days before graduation. We were at a graduation uh, ceremony party. Practice. And I had a cupcake in my hand. And he had to tell me, yeah, you're not graduating. Your GPA is too low. <laughs> and so... <clears throat> anyway, I learned so much from that that whole experience, though, because mm -hmm. I went from the ditch of being legalistic from where I grew up yeah. to then becoming kind of, yeah, I wasn't a greasy gracer, but mm -hmm. I did kind of take grace for granted, and I didn't understand responsibility. Uh -huh. And so Barry was super gracious. He let me come back, finish night school uh, that one semester. Mm -hmm. And so from that, I mean, I learned that teachers at Karis are incredible, yeah. but honestly, being able to experience that and see how, you know, I tried moving away and God brought me back. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't think I'd ever graduate. And then God had me graduate. And then I thought Jessica would never <laughs> see me outside the friend zone. And then <laughs> God, God works all things together for good. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, a, a good story because, you know, so many people though, you know, we have different things that we'll make mistakes on, yet God is so faithful yeah. to bring us to a place where he's still teaching us and redeeming everything for his glory. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. So as far as what you do now within the ministry, where do you, what's your vision for the future? I mean, Andrew has got so much vision for this ministry, and there are so many lives being impacted. I think we were talking about this the other day, and I was telling you stories of people because uh, we hear all these stories through World Outreach of all of these nations and peoples and students that are having supernatural healings. And, and just like what you guys are capturing here on a daily basis, it's just happening uh, on, a, on a global scale. And um, so you guys have so many stories all over the world to capture. So uh, Andrew's vision is constantly, truly going far and deep with the gospel, and it's touching people. And, lasting ways, eternal ways. So what do you see with Andrew's vision and everything that he talks about and just the things that God's put on your heart and bringing you here for such a time as this? What's your vision for, for the stories team and for where it could go? Wow. Well, the ministry is so huge. I mean, we're just blown away by how many things are happening. Uh, I mean, Jessica just started doing the AWM now with her team. Mm -hmm. They're releasing one story every week. And the thing is, we, there's so many things going on, we can't run out of stories. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And seeing um, just all the schools around the world and how they're impacting their own cultures, what we really would like to do is be able to grow our team first off to where we can handle all the stories that we've got, because what people are seeing produced is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. There is just an endless supply of healings, um, endless supply of lives being changed, people going out and and sharing the gospel in just amazing ways. 
And so kind of what you've been able to do with um, mobilizing all these AWM offices, mm -hmm. we really would love to be able to help people at those locations be able to produce their own stories so that mm -hmm. they can reach their own cultures in their own way. That's awesome. I love that. You know, mm -hmm. I remember uh, listening to a Zoom meeting that Andrew just did with our school in Hong Kong recently. And uh, one of the ladies was telling her healing journey where she couldn't get out of bed. She was just, so she just sat and listened to healing journeys. She just watched them over and over and over and over again. And she just said to the Lord, excuse me, Lord, why isn't there a healing journeys of Thailand? Because she was from Thailand uh, watching and, and uh, as a student there in the Hong Kong school. And then after she got healed, she said, I am a Thailand healing journey. And I thought that was so cool oh. about how, you know, uh, these schools could, could capture their own healing journeys in their languages, which would be phenomenal. I love that vision. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. really cool. Yeah. Well, because every time we, we travel, whether it's an international school or one of the domestic schools, there's always a media person there. Mm -hmm. who tries, you know, who wants to talk to us and find stuff out. And man, I just wish we could just spend time just like showing them like this is, you could do this, you know, yeah. and you could do it for your area. And it's very, very possible. And so mm -hmm. I think that that's something that would be very beneficial for everyone. That's mm -hmm. a great vision. Well, what do you think that these stories mean to the people that watch them? Um, how important is it not just to hear a testimony on stage verbally, but to see the story and to see uh, you guys help reenact different things and show people. Why is it so, why is sight and sound so important? Hmm. Well, Stephen, he created um, Nik Nikki Ochinsky's story yes. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And every healing journey that we pretty much film, everyone kind of goes back to that. Oh, and there's cool. just something so powerful about you can hear Andrew talk about it, but then when you see someone actually live it and experience it, it mm -hmm. kind of gives you little little nuggets. Yeah. Um, we, we just filmed Vanya Curry's healing journey uh, last December, and she gave it to us this way because she watched through Nikki's story. She watched through all the healing journeys. Mm. And she said, what you guys are doing, it's kind of like a, a pirate who has a, a treasure map, and you guys are just kind of like helping give, show the steps towards the treasure. And she made it very clear that it's not a formula. People have to listen to the Holy Spirit and, and let the Holy Spirit show them what's the key to their healing. Mm -hmm. But by watching other people live it out, there's just little uh, nuggets that people are able to see. Mm -hmm. Like um, I've heard a lot of people who they get healed and then the symptoms come back. Mm -hmm. And pretty much every healing journey we've done in the last five years, that happens. And I think for people who are healed and they're walking it out, but then the symptoms come back, they're like, wait a second, that happened to Bianca. And then they could just remember, okay, I'm just going to stand strong. You yeah. know, just as God word, God's word works for them, it works for me too. That's good. And I think it's awesome because this one lady we did a healing journey on in Holland, Cindy Mazes, um, part of her story was she would go through all the healing journeys and different healing journeys taught her different things. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think like with my cash, it was like not to look at that, at that outward appearance. And then yeah. Bianca's, I think it was that it came back. Um, and so then just all these different healing journeys gave her a different key that she was missing. And so I think that's another reason why having them in video format can be beneficial versus a live testimony is that when someone's sharing their testimony, they're just trying to think of all the facts and they're just kind of sharing it from their experience, which is great. Mm -hmm. But we're able to go, okay, well what really happened? You know, what was the key here? We can kind of focus it to where when people watch it, they don't have 20 things that they need to remember. They have one or two things that they can actually walk away from and put into practice in their life. That's great. Well, I think what you guys are doing is a whole form of not just Andrew's ministry, but it's an extension and you're taking it out farther. You know, and again, that's Andrew's vision. How do you take the gospel as far and as deep as possible? So everything that all the lives that get touched here, um, your team gets to say, okay, how do we take it farther? How do we capture that story and take it into people's homes? And I know we just, one of the things I loved um, was we just produced the Healing, uh, Healing University. And so it's the, the curriculum series, three levels. You know, it's got 56 lessons. But what I loved about every single teaching lesson that one of our Charis 
uh, staff members, instructors did, is that it was followed right up by a healing journey story. And so it really matched that we were not just preaching the word, but this is the power of the word and what is happening to real life people. And that was such an amazing thing. So you guys were, had produced this, and, and, but yet then we were able to partner up with something else to have its impact even go farther. And so uh, thank you guys for all that you are doing here in the ministry. It is a tremendous blessing. I look forward to he seeing more of the stories that you guys put together, the weekly stories and, and the healing and the destinies, all, all the different things. And Beyond the Game is now, we're in filming second season already. Um, it's kind of a continuation of season one, but I think we're going to have 26 episodes, yep. something like that. So that's going to be really awesome. Amen. Yep. Well, Andrew's got so much vision, and I know Stephen Bransford, you know, capturing that vision, you guys capturing that vision. So thank you guys for all that you're doing. I love seeing how God has taken you on a journey that you couldn't have imagined. Yeah. And so I believe it's just the start for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I believe other people will be inspired um, on their own journeys. Um, to follow after the Lord. So thank you for all that you are doing truly behind the scenes, because like you said, there's hours and hours and hours behind the computer and behind the screen. But when you guys are able to capture that 10 minute story and the way it goes out into the world, people truly see what you guys do. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Amen. Well, thank you for We're being honored. with us today. Well, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed this inside story. Um, if you have never watched one of our healing journeys, grace encounters, uh, any of our destiny stories, our AWM Now, it's up on the website every week. Check that out because this truly is something that you are also a part of as a partner, as a friend of this ministry. Um, every time that you sow and pray and, 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 and serve this ministry, you truly are helping us reach lives. And, uh, and seeing God's stories and testimonies being not just happening in individuals' lives and families' lives, and that's, that's worth it. But because of Jeff and Jessica and their team, they're able to take those stories and truly launch them and multiply them into the world, and you get to be a part of that. So thank you guys as partners for that. You truly are behind the camera with us, helping capture those stories. Even though you've never met these people, uh, you're having a great impact. So. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Inside Story. We have next month some amazing guests that we also get to introduce you to and the things that they are doing within this ministry and how we're reaching even other areas and spheres uh, of, of the world that needs the gospel and just how Andrew's vision through them is being multiplied. So you do not want to miss next month. So thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you on our next edition of Inside Story. On this edition of Inside Story, Carrie interviewed Jeff and Jessica Giamo, who started their journey together on a Karis Germany mission trip in 2013. Their romance blossomed into a dynamic marriage and video ministry, which has taken them around the world. Jeff leads a team that produces destiny stories, grace encounters, financial breakthroughs, and healing journeys which are all available for website viewing or for DVD purchase at awmi.net. In addition, Jessica produces weekly AWM Now stories, which can be found on awmi.net, as well as YouTube and gospeltruth.tv. Together, they helped produce Beyond the Game with Tony Dungy and JB James Brown, a TV series first airing on gospeltruth.tv. Beginning May 1st, 2021, a full 26 episodes will begin airing through a new YouTube channel at beyondthegame.co. We invite you to go there now to preview this exciting new way of delivering the stories of celebrity Christian athletes, coaches, and chaplains. That's beyondthegame.co. Media school is starting to become more well-known and people are starting to really look at the aspects of third year here at Karis. And I do recommend it, whichever field you're going into, whether it's gonna be ministry, missions, or media, you have a story and as Stephen says, it's better than what you think. This is a legacy that's being left that was started by Stephen and Randall Montecule and the other people that have passed through here. They passed on the torch and there's legacy being created and we just keep on upping the bar and we need to keep on remembering that. 
if you're going into media school is to look at it to realize that you are going to be establishing a family. Work with the other fellow classmates, find out what they know that you don't know, and you guys are going to like be able to teach each other and share, and that will actually like speed up your growth in media. The whole key is to get what's inside you, which is a treasure, out. And once you get it out, God can bring in people, mentors, and, and counselors, and, and like other fellow classmates to help you polish it. All the teachers within media school, a lot of them are from the industry. A lot of them are freelancers, and they're working in the industry. We have people that come from Hollywood that teach you how to break down scripts. People that have done movies, are doing movies, doing short film competition, teaching you like what they're doing, what things are changing, themes and styles, and then aspects that never change. There's foundations that never change in the media field. Cameras have changed, technology will always change, but the skill set of the people have just constantly being passed on. Discipleship is very important in ministry, but it's also important in skill sets too. And since we're media ministers, we need to be able to pass that on and teach others. It really is ministry. Whether you're a Christian or not, you're ministering in an area, you're telling a story, and you're telling an ideology or a bias that you believe in. Whichever you're going into, whichever third year track, there's treasures within your heart that God wants to get out. Stop imagining things like what could be and actually act on it. Put your hands to something so God can actually bless it. Be sure to look for the next Inside Story here on the Andrew Womack Ministries website. In May, Andrew interviews three-time Emmy Award-winning network broadcaster James Brown and his wife Dorothy. See how James and Dorothy's relationship with God drives their lives to share the goodness of God with everyone they encounter. Don't miss our June edition of Inside Story with NBC's Football Night in America analyst and Super Bowl winning player and head coach Tony Dungy. Learn the secrets from this amazing man to living positive in a negative world. See you next time.